Welcome in, everybody, to our 10th session of Mother's Jail. Tonight's session marks the beginning of Chapter 3, Skyward, and it is also titled Above the Clouds. Last time, when we all got together, the party continued to speak with the Council of Five in the city of Mitra Scalif as they were attempting to convince the various pirate captains to uh, agree to an alliance between the Children of the Deep and Azure's Remembrance in the hopes of being able to move their army from the Crown down onto the Mother's Jail mainland uh, without being harried by pirates the entire way. They were able to convince at least most of them to uh, side with them when they were to go meet with Admiral Shiso Denerin. Um... The only one they weren't wholly able to convince was Dominic, but as it turns out, once the other four agreed, well, they were pretty easy to bring on board as well. Um, they got to meet uh, Captain Lillian Akanai, who was indeed the one who attempted to blow up the theater, although they found out that the plan wasn't really for the explosion to go off. <laughs> that was just the doing of someone who has electricity coursing through them a lot. Guess we'll never know. <laughs> Guess we'll never know. Shocking. <laughs> and uh, you also got to meet with Captain Canis Mistal, uh, who you found out Ramiel had something of a... Uh, well, there was a mutual infatuation, shall we say. Uh, although Braley was a little upset because she's in the Orion ship. Uh, so she, you know... There was a little bit. There was a little bit of awkwardness there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, Don't forget about Herb. <laughs> you also met Herb, a chonky messenger pigeon yeah. that, as far as you can tell, can barely fly. Yeah. Uh, it seems to have run you a letter from or a note from Cadence. Um, uh, the note was simple and short, and just said, "Follow the silver wolf." Uh, you explored around trying to understand what that might mean, but it wasn't until later that day that you found out exactly what it means, as that evening you were invited back to the Eastbrook estate, uh, where Lady Leneth Eastbrook had agreed to host your meeting with Admiral Shiso Denerin, only to reveal that she is Admiral Shiso Denerin. That is one of her many pseudonyms that she uses, that she might be able to travel without being assassinated. Um... And she did indeed accept your petition for an alliance, having secured the support of most of her captains. Uh, she saw no reason to stand against it. She seems to believe in the lot of you. Uh, and she did ask if you would be willing to go to Mitra Glorianda, not only to petition further aid, uh, but to uh, report on what is happening. She's a busy lady. She is a very busy woman. Uh, she also wants you to go for a, a much more personal reason to the elves. She believes that Ramiel may be a prince of the elves uh, and wants you to go meet the current prioress, Prioress Vicenzia, uh, to get confirmation of that. Uh, to get you there, because most people don't know where Mitra Glorianda is, you, uh, she had contracted out uh, one... Captain Kelsey Raynor to guide you there, or to uh, ferry you there, I should say. And uh, Captain Raynor appeared ha bearing her animated silver wolf tattoo uh, and indeed uh, gave credence to Cadence's um, prediction and uh, told you to meet her aboard her ship, uh, which you found to be called the Nightwing. And we left off with you all boarding that ship and finding that it is driven by propeller versus just, uh, you know, normally a ship would use just sail. Uh, and as the ship took off into the harbor, the central platform of it opened up and a large balloon inflated out of it, helping the ship to begin lifting up off the water. And you all became airborne. And that's where we left off. Some of us more used to it than others. I would say that for you, Ayla, this is not as shocking as for other people. 
who are in the group. I mean, it is shocking because you've never seen a ship that can do this before, but it's not quite like it is for everyone else where this is completely unheard of. Uh, but indeed, you all have begun lifting up into the air uh, as the ship uh, clears kind of the far reaches of the harbor, now moving over land as it does, and uh, continues to ascend upwards. As it does, a large red crystal structure that seems to be embedded towards the front of the ship begins to emanate a beam of light forwards, which then diffuses all the way back across the ship, and you kind of watch as the ship starts to turn invisible. Um, so is it the full on, like, now we just look like we're people floating? No, it, you are within, <laughs> within a field of some sort where you can still okay. see everything, uh, but anyone looking in would not see anything. Was that in the Uh, Kelsey gives a grin. Mercy that one me. is, that one is my design. That's a that's very quite impressive. Well, I'm glad that you approve, she says, kind of taking the wheel as the ship continues to ascend ever upwards. Uh, I have had rooms prepared for you downstairs. It is a few days' journey to Mitra Glorianda, where it is currently. Uh, it is, let's see, she kind of... Uh, glazes up, uh, gazes up at one of her uh, maps. Her maps, interestingly, are mounted kind of above her pilot's seat that she's in. Uh, and she looks up. Mitra Glorianda is currently 20 miles southeast of Alcana. So, yeah, we have a bit of a trip. I'm sorry, did you just say it is currently at a place not where its, it's location normally... changes? Uh, yes, uh, uh, constantly, in fact. Oh. Fortunately, it changes in a very predictable manner. It follows the moon, Rosalind. Yes, that is, um... Well, as that is fortunate for a self-moving continent. I didn't know they could do, they could do that. <laughs> well, until about 500 years ago, they couldn't. And as far as I know, they're the only ones that can. Do continents go through ev evolutions? This is, this is news. No, they <laughs> have a lot of work done to them. Ah, okay. So uh, suppose it's lucky for them that Rosalind isn't the one currently sitting in a giant tree on Terrison. Yes, that would have been, well, unfortunate. Uh, Mitra Glorianda is tidally locked with Rosalind. Well, my entire conception of the world has just been shaken <laughs> so if you'll excuse me and she'll, she'll just wander up over to the railing <laughs> just vomit down, over the side of the railing <laughs> walk away <laughs> uh, nope uh sarah you mentioned uh nova had grabbed on to ayla yeah when we when we took off uh when it started to level out, uh, they uh, they would have let go and just kind of went, apologies. <laughs> uh, I think Ayla just kind of smiles, bumps him. Hey, I'm not gonna let you fall, promise. Mm. Right. Well, um, thankfully there are railings for that. I'm going to go this way. Uh, you don't have to really worry about falling. It's not the fall that's the problem. What is? The landing. Oh, yeah, I'm implying like... that you know what? That was never... the idea. It... No, never mind. <laughs> Kelsey's just grinning ear to ear. <laughs> I think Ayla turns around and Kelsey just conveniently gets clipped with the tip of a wing. <laughs> she glances over. Shrug. Um... Well, uh, why don't you come on down below deck and I'll introduce you to the crew. There he will. Uh, she seems to uh, hit a couple of settings and the ship is now piloting itself. 
Uh, the wonders never cease. <laughs> Uh, Ma'am, really definitely was going to try to grab for the helm if she didn't do that. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, no worries. Uh, it can't take you anywhere this way, but it can get back to port. Uh, come on down below. And she does indeed lead you uh, around. So picture like your kind of typical ship. Uh, if you're on the main area, the, um, the bow. Yeah, the bow is up front. Uh, and uh, there's two staircases that lead up to where the wheel is uh, in the back area, although there is a seated pilot's chair there. Um, in the front above where the, the uh, wheel is, there is a set of doors that lead downwards into the lower levels of the ship. Everyone's laughing, and that makes me nervous. Nothing happened. Nothing Okay. <laughs> no, it's I. We're just busy doing our shit talking. Okay, great. Uh, descending down, you see the main level of the ship uh, is a long mess hall, and uh, further back there looks to be like a storage area for um, there's like powder kegs and you know other thing other weapons of war. This is a warship. Um. And then there's another set of stairs that leads further down, uh, which Kelsey explains. Uh, those steps there will take you down to uh, quarters. There's been a room prepared for each of you. Uh, and then there's another set of stairs there that leads down to the engine propulsion room. I wouldn't recommend going down there. Thermal will have your head if you do. Um, Where's Thermal? Oh, uh, yes. Um, she uh, rings a bell, uh, and that seems to be... You're not sure if that summons everyone for a meal or if that just summons everybody, but people start coming up from the la uh, level below. Uh, and she starts to introduce you all one at a time. Uh, walking over to the first person, uh, there is a woman in her early 30s with short blonde hair cut into a bob. She's got a very kind face and a soft demeanor about her. Um, and uh, Kelsey smiles. This is my first mate. We affectionately call her the ship's mom. Uh, this is Lysel Rayner. Uh, the one uh, behind you, Layla, is Thermal. And as you kind of turn, you see a smaller elven girl. Even for Adia Asenil, there is more of her that is machine than you would expect. It looks like at some point her bottom jaw all the way down to her right arm was blown off and has all been replaced by machinery at this point and as she opens her mouth to like greet you words don't come out there's a series of like clicks and whirring noises that come out uh and uh uh kelsey nods uh, we just call her thermal uh she doesn't talk a whole lot that you can understand but she's nice enough as long as you don't um, go mess around with her engine room she is our engineer and she will get very mad if you touch the engines I assure you, I will stay well out of the way. Uh, Thermal gives you a thumbs up. Uh, and she just clicks a couple times, uh, uh, but gives a polite bow. Very unnerved by that. Yeah, I mean, she doesn't... She definitely looks like she was in a very nasty explosion at some point. That should have killed her, but they managed to save her, apparently. Uh... She walks over to an elven man uh, and puts a, a hand on his shoulder. He's a tall elven man with short, icy blue hair and deep green eyes. Uh, and she taps her shoulder. This is Melchior uh, Halibreth, and he is our ship's quartermaster. Uh, we're, he's actually on loan to us from the Glorianda Air Navy. Uh, they apparently don't like having independent ships just flying around everywhere. So uh, he's, uh, yeah, he's on loan to us. And Melchior raises an eyebrow, and I'm ecstatic about it. Yeah, he's a good guy. And she's like, smacks his back really hard. <laughs> Not what I thought you were going to say. Uh, <laughs> and then uh, this one, uh, the little mousy one behind you, Braley, that's uh, Ketir, Whisper Silk. And turning, you see uh, a, if you were going to like describe like a small elven boy, he is a small. Um, mm -hmm. He is a very soft boy. Uh, he has um, uh, hair the color of autumn and glowing uh, green eyes. Uh, he's a Feyborn, clearly. Uh, and uh, he also looks extremely young. 
for an elven, uh, for an elf, uh, to be serving on a military vessel. Uh, but uh, Kelsey assures you he just finished medical school and he is our ship surgeon. Indeed. Uh, and last but not least, she looks around. Illatrin, where are you? There. Uh, over by already kind of uh, looking through some of the powder stores. Uh, that is our master gunner, uh, Illatrin Whitewalk. Uh, he is well dedicated to his work. We'll put it that way. Uh, and you do see a medium height elven man uh, with silver hair, though it's almost shaved all the way down to the scalp. Uh, he has eyes the color of the ocean, and a small fire pixie named Spark flutters around him. That's weird. Uh, you do notice, if there's one thing you notice about everyone here, is they all have very short hair on this ship. Uh, which, if you ask why, they explain, have you ever gotten your hair caught in a propeller? Uh, I can't say I have, but I also I have hair. I cannot h recommend highly enough that those of you with hair, especially long hair, you tie it up while you're on board. Like, Ayla just tucks the braid down, like, the back of her jacket. <laughs> Ramiel glances over at Braley. I can I got... braid that for you if you need me to. Okay, there's some, there's some, there's some twigs in there, too. You can use it to, like, you know, like, just pin them up if you want. Her hair is a, her hair is a project, so... <laughs> <laughs> I imagine Braylee's hair to be like the um, the Anna hair when she wakes up and frozen. <laughs> yeah. At all times. Or like Amy, wa Amy Winehouse is like bump is like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like... <laughs> uh, and indeed, uh, walking over to you, uh, the woman that you know is named Lysel smiles very pleasant. She has a very warm and kind smile. Uh, now, uh, if you'll accompany me, I have rooms prepared for each of you, uh, just down below. Thank you kindly. And she does indeed take you down another set of stairs into what is a hallway, uh, and on either side of it, there are rooms. They're very small rooms. Obviously, this isn't a, a, an incredibly big ship, uh, but she explains that the rooms on the right side are the crew, and uh, rooms on the left side are for passengers. Uh, so you are welcome to claim any of the rooms on the left side. There are enough for each of you. Uh, if you need anything, it does get very cold up here at night, so if you need an extra blanket, don't hesitate to ask. Thank you. Um, for all of this. Yes, we do, we do appreciate your hospitality. Oh, not at all. We have been contracted to uh, ferry up uh, important dignitaries. That's hence we uh, have the invisibility uh, on the ship. Yeah, still. Our lives are in your hands. She not. You could not put them in better hands than my wife's. A raise an eyebrow. Oh, dawning realization. That yeah. was exp that, that was that was explain the um the, the common name. Yes, uh, yes, I I took her name. I my my apologies. I'm uh, I'm a bit um. Does, I'm does she slap her butt? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Is that what happened? What? No, nothing. Because you said like which, you said, which no, she's no, no. asking for confirmation of whose ass got slapped during that introduction. No, no one's um, ass got slapped. It was like a like someone's like. No, uh, someone's like, like, someone's ass did get slapped. It was a joking. pat on the back. I yeah, yeah. But, oh, but okay, okay. Kelsey's okay. Gay and has a wife. That was a dude. It was just. Oh, okay. Different, away. different. Okay. Different, different person. Yeah. No. No. No one's ass got slapped. <laughs> Listen, I know that's how this, how this campaign is I, I know it's confusing. Kelly, Oops. Kelly's <laughs> looking back at me, going, "What the fuck is happening?" What are we talking? I'm so lost. So there was the, the, one time that Kelsey we... slapped the back of Melchior, and you said, and the way oh. you phrased it, I jokingly went, "That's not what I thought you were gonna say." And then I think I think Apple was like, "Wait, whose ass is getting?" Yeah, that, that's oh, what happened. It's like, "Hey, yo, we we slapping asses." Be careful with the backside. In, in this, <laughs> no, she, in this campaign, I'm just messing with butt. We, I get we it don't now. need family trees. We need fuck trees. <laughs> no. 
Who is doing who? Kelsey's not doing Melchior. I assume she's doing her wife. Yes. Right here. Yes. Lysel, yes. That's, that's that's a safe assumption. Sure, uh, fucking hope she's doing her wife. Unless they have an Fuck. unless they have an agreement not to. But I mean, yeah, everybody's relationships different. You never know. See mm -hmm. clarification. <laughs> See footnotes <laughs> for the fucking tree. <laughs> Break down. Anyway, so sorry. <laughs> Riley speaks out her breath. He's smacking his ass. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, Rami El Ear is uh, a fan. No, I was gonna say a, f a um. fan. Yeah, you're a fan of the uh, whispers and silence. Ah, oh course. well, I I wouldn't say I'm 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 a fan. He knows okay. all of the names. Whose occupations is whose? What they it's did? True. He's very, very knowledgeable. Big fan. He Big does fan go of on work. about them quite, quite a lot. <laughs> well, I think Kelsey would be the first to tell you that she was not a whisper in silence, but that's fair. Her dad would beg to differ, and well, both her dads, for that matter. I wouldn't call her one to her face if I were you. I um I, I picked up on that um. Uh, as I say, if there's anything you need, uh, meals will be provided three times a day. And, um, yeah, whatever you need to make your trip comfortable, just uh, don't hesitate to let me know. Um, if you wouldn't mind, um, would, would we be able to um, to ask key questions uh, regarding our uh, current destination? Of course. I'd be more than happy to answer whatever I can. Um, given the um, the the ease or rather routine um uh movements of um of uh the good captain um uh, do you make these trips often to meet gloriander no i wouldn't say so um we spend most of our time in meet gloriander the continents at war uh so our chances of leaving are not super frequent. Uh, we were actually sent down to pick you up uh, on command of Prior's Vincenzia. It war? Yes. Oh, you haven't been told anything. No, to, we are uh, woefully to unaware. Pick up, you were sent to pick us up specifically. Uh, yes, the Prioress wanted to speak with you, is my understanding. Side-eyeing Ramiel. Yeah, yes, I unusual hmm. we thought so as I say uh, most of our missions are within the bounds of the continent itself we don't often get to come back down to the mainlands well, um, we'll have to show you around sometime if the opportunity arises although we are of course busy with our own war at the moment I should like that I know I know Terrison quite well I was born there but um, I can't say I know a whole lot about um, Mother's Jail or any of the other continents. What can you tell us of this war that uh, Mitra Gloriande is under? Yeah, um, of course. Uh, she kind of... We we'd probably best all sit down. It's a bit of a story. Um, if we're going to take it from the mm -hmm. top, so to speak. We could go, we could go back to the mess hall. Um, yeah! Yeah! Yeah, Everyone one uh, would love to sit. That seems, of course. Yeah. Really, are you are you hanging? Oh yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> uh, well, we'll take care of that right away, dear. Don't worry. Um, she wants a pigeon. I'm not afraid. I'm afraid I don't have any pigeon. I do have quail. Quail. Oh. Likes to pigeon. Quail not likes as to uh, quite uh, good. Uh, as you're all kind of like talking in the hallway, uh, a loud sound is heard and uh, you see almost like instinctively uh, uh, Lysel, uh quickly like turns to make room for Thermal to pass by and she nods uh, Thermal says she likes all of you you seem nice oh, oh. Uh, sort of look back has you said she has anybody seen about giving her a, a proper care 
Yes. Uh, we took her to Mitra Santeran after the injuries, and um, unfortunately, they weren't able to fully restore her ability to speak uh, in the absence of the machine prince or in the waning of his power I should say uh, some of the greater technoprostheses aren't working as well as they once did but um, we were able to save her life and we're grateful for that she was uh, our first crew member sort of nods yeah Unfortunately, you can't always bring people back to everything, back to full. No, although... Always a shame. For Thermal, as long as she has two working hands and her mind is intact, she's content enough. How can you speak to her? Uh, I mostly just read the expressions on her face. You... Mm. You start understanding what some of the various clickings and whirs mean. You hear them repeated enough. We've been traveling with her for ten years now, so. Uh, please, come on upstairs, and I'll uh, prepare us all some tea. He's kind of like uh, Ayla's wing flaps. After a while, you can sometimes understand what they mean. Fascinating. Right now, uh, she is cramped. Well, uh, uh, I am um, sorry. It is quite <laughs> tight down here, unfortunately. Uh, oh, please, please. Uh, please don't say that word. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, <laughs> well, uh, feel free to put your stuff in your rooms, and uh, I'll meet you up in the mess hall. Thank you. She ascends the stairs back up to the second floor of the ship. Nova's not used to, like, putting stuff away. I mean, they have a backpack or whatever. Sure. But I imagine they walk in the room when they hear put stuff away, and they're kind of like, all right, it's her right, go back. Yeah, uh, <laughs> the rooms are very small. Um, they are little more than a cot and a wash basin. Um, obviously, uh, in terms of, like, a bathroom, options are limited. Uh but there is a uh, window with what appears to be a magical seal over it because no wind is coming in or out. But you can see outside. Uh, and if you look down, you see well below you the ocean. Does the, uh, does the basin have, like, the, 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 uh, the plumbing uh, system? Like, can we get running water here? No. You can't get running water on the ship or anything like that. Is there is there like a pitcher of cold water? Yeah, or there's they, there's a pitcher in the room to you know wash up with. Okay, I'm I'm uh, Ramiel is going to take and just pl- splash it over him. Yeah, get cleaned up a little bit. Uh, no, uh, take no, a that's shower. Not, no. no, gotcha. Get a cold you, shower. Do you need me? Uh, you know, on this trip, do you need me to prepare, create, or destroy water? <laughs> <laughs> that could be helpful, actually. You need a special mushroom. I mean, yes. <laughs> I think that's going to get him back into this mess, isn't it? <laughs> Depends on the type of room, I guess. Um, Layla will take the furthest away from the window seat she can get. Yeah. Uh, Ramiel is going to wait for Nova and Ayla to, to find their rooms before he keep, before he before he gets it. Yeah, so you can choose one ah! further away. <laughs> he learned. He learned. Oof. 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 <laughs> he learned. Just, just like a, just like a pointed look at Nova and Ayla, just like what? crossed what arms. Zid. That's what Nova's gonna say. See, what's up, Zid? She put her stuff. Uh, well, that didn't really stop um much. Oh, you'll be with your, you'll, you'll be uh, you'll be having your own thoughts. I am sure you'll be very distracted. Uh, I decline to comment. I'm just saying you cannot even focus on a sentence right now. I don't know what you mean. You do seem to have trouble uh, communicating your thoughts in a way that's quite unlike you. I am a little exhausted. Um, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's been a long day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Either way, I think you will sleep just fine. (laughs) 
I, I understand. And, uh, actually... Will, uh... Just because it's the appropriate way to do it, drop a heroism in there so you get... Uh, plus five, ten hit points. To revive you? Yeah. <laughs> Very he's, well. he's tired trying to... <laughs> Gonna be able to go all night, he is. Well, uh, if Layla's taken the... T uh, I think Nova sees that Layla's taken the... If your heroism this. lasts for more than four hours... <laughs> four hours, hours <laughs> you should probably get chucked out by a cleric. Um, and maybe not the one that gave it to you. <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> I would find a different one. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Man, uh, does a lot of stuff, huh? I feel like <laughs> Ayla probably just grabs the room next to Nova and does the same thing, where she walks in, throws down her back, and goes, "Yep, it's away." <laughs> oh my god! Uh, Dolvik, thank you for the inspo to Ramiel. Oh my god! Why? <laughs> Brantley's gonna like look be between like Ayla and Nova as like they go into their rooms. Oh, are they gonna aggressively cuddle tonight? <laughs> that, that's that's mm. I... right. I I will that, say this: given the size of the cots, <laughs> given the size of the cots, you they would have to be real aggressive. <laughs> There's a floor. Yeah, that's about where you'd there's, be doing it. There's plenty of purposes. There's a wall. Rami learned the hard way that they like using walls. Surfaces. Oh, If you're desperate enough, you can make it work. <laughs> oh yeah. I don't so, I'm not saying it doesn't happen. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure Kelsey and Lasell get, you know, get it done. But anything, anything is a surface if you try hard enough. Especially if you have wings and, like, room to fly. I would say you barely... I don't know that you even have room to spread your wings or, in these or bedrooms. Or astral arms, as we found out. Yeah, or astral arms. So, you set your stuff down. It doesn't take very long. You're not checking into a hotel. You're just <laughs> here for a couple days uh, as you travel. And you make your way back up to... Uh, the mess hall. Uh, you can now see from like where you're here, down uh, at one end of the front area here, there is like I say, um, uh, cannonballs and like powder storage and stuff like that. On the other side, there is a uh, tarped off area that uh, you would guess is probably the surgery uh, where um, uh, where Katir is can set up to work. Uh, currently, the only people in the uh, mess hall are Lysel and Kelsey. Uh, she informs you that uh, uh, Iterin has the uh, Illiterin rather has the helm. But uh, you know, bid to sit down and uh, you're poured some tea and there are some little uh, like um, crackers with jam put out to eat. Good jam. Mm -hmm. Taking my tea. Try to sip it. Burn my tongue. Put it down. Uh, Wait. <laughs> no, it's it's the perfect temperature. The perfect temperature. Listen, oh, she's not called Ship's mom for nothing. Damn, she knows. She, she, I, she waited. That tea I feel down. like Ayla does like the same thing as Nova and then just stares at the teapot like, what sorcery <laughs> is this? Uh, as you, It doesn't take you long to figure out what she's doing because as she pours herself a cup, you see uh, from her fingertips a little bit of frost emanate out over the teacup. And she takes a sip of hers as well. Unless she didn't put her finger in it. She did not do that, <laughs> no. Oh, so it is sorcery. D&D movie, sorry. Yeah. Um. But uh, she sits, and uh, Kelsey looks up. Uh, so I'm being told that you weren't really given a whole lot to work with. Um, Almost much. nothing, to be honest. Just, uh, we should come here, and uh, here we are. Well... I'm probably not supposed to tell you any of this, um, and it's probably gonna, I'll probably get in trouble for it, but you're gonna find out when you go anyway, so. Uh, we will act surprised when they tell us again. Yeah. I so, uh, let's see. I guess the story here begins 
in the year 223, uh, so 223 years after the fall of Scala. Uh, there was a great breakthrough in the city of Mitra Primus, uh, a new field of magic called astral magic. Um, to those outside, it seemed as though one day the continent of Mitra Glorianda suddenly vanished, leaving only some of the outlying islands and reefs behind. In truth, the continent was lifted from the very depths of the sea, masked in a great bank of clouds as it ascended towards the heavens. Um, for the elves, they believed, much like the sky dwarves of Terrasen do, that the prime goddess can be found in the stars and that by drawing nearer the heavens, they could commune with her properly. Um, such was it their goal to be cl even closer than those who sit atop Mount Raven's Flight. And commune they did, though not with whom they had intended. Uh, it was on the moon Rosalind that they established contact with beings not of Serene. And in their excitement, they bid these beings join them upon Mitra Glorianda, and that is a mistake that they have been paying for ever since. Calling themselves Devilkin, the Devils of Rosalind came to Mitra Glorianda in force, utilizing their magics to keep the continent tidally locked with the moon and allowing for easy transport. And for 500 years now, the elves of Mitra Glorianda have served as the only obstacle between a total invasion of Serene by these devils. Devils, you said. That is what they called themselves. I've seen them. That is quite a tale. I wish I'm... that it was only a tale. So not, they're different from demons then? Yes, they aren't. They don't bear corruption in the way that demons or Scala uh, that they did. They don't return to the void when killed. They do die. They are born on the moon Rosalind and come here to attempt to invade. What, uh, what do they want? Just invade? Yeah, what, what, to what end? I mean, you're asking someone who has no idea. They have been at war for many of our lifetimes now, attempting to invade. They don't have any interest in speaking. Um, they have conquered a healthy portion of Mitra Glorianda, though proudly the elves have stood in defense and warred for their homeland for a very long time. She glances at you, Ramiel at the expense of their presence in the rest of the world. Contemplative look. Yeah, Nova contemplating for a different reason. Mm. <laughs> we'll get to that later. I will say, Nova, Yeah. you don't sense Aruna right now, or maybe you do, and she is just being real fucking quiet. Okay. Get there on to me. Yeah. <laughs> Nova will address that later uh there is a pensive look on um on ramiel's face right now is that related to why you were searching for us i don't follow the ongoing say she doesn't know? Uh, she said I don't follow. Oh. Does this conflict have anything to do? Why were you looking for us? I have been contracted by the Prioress Vincenzia to bring you. No information given. She was not... Well, she is as she always is. Not particularly forthcoming with the reasoning behind her orders, and I am a soldier. I don't question them when given. I understand. Simply trying to find out what we are looking at, what sort of situation we are entering into. Yes. Well, 
You are entering an active war zone, so I would caution you to always listen to what others tell you to do. Uh, most, many of us here have been fighting these devils for our entire lives. And um, they can be cunning, crafty, and more than anything, brutal. Let's see. How do they fight? In our experience, quite viciously. Uh, they are powerful and skilled in magics. They often use those, though many of them are martially proficient as well. They are... They have a penchant for using what's called a soul coin. They draw forth the soul of their slain victim and use it to power themselves up. <coughs> As in, say, uh, when someone they killed dies, they take their soul and it enhances magical ability? Precisely that. That is why we have taken to burning our fallen. I see. How dreadful. <clears throat> Unfortunately so. And it's a practice that's not, that was also used on Terracin yeah. early on. I remember. I only heard tales. So my mum wouldn't really talk much about that particular junction. It was a difficult time in our world. Scala's return was unexpected. And when it happened, many people would rather have turned a blind eye to it and pretended it didn't exist. And then we didn't have a choice anymore. Well, she wanted the world to witness just what she would be capable of and made an example of a, a city that was known for its splendor. She made an example of everywhere she crossed. I dread to think what would have happened if if she wasn't stopped. I think what we are dealing with now would be the least of our problems. Well. I think she would be the devil's problems. Enemy of our enemy. <laughs> that is... Yeah, it's well. Something. Uh, she is I gone, and this if... world has been left to us. So the devils are our problem to deal with. That said, um... How much of the, um, the, the current prioress, um... Uh... Would you be able to, um... To tell us, um... Priors Vicenzia? Yes, um, particularly, um, I'm not completely sure how elven leadership um, works. I don't know if this is um, something that is passed on in, fa in a family or. Elven leadership on Mitra Glorianda does not work as it does in Terrison. Uh, Elven leadership is determined by the prior leader. Normally, they choose who they feel is most adequate to succeeding them. In the case of Prioress Vicenzia, there was a great deal of surprise when she was chosen. Uh, she, was very, she was very young to be chosen as a prioress. But no one could argue with her abilities. She was indeed brilliant. 
and she has been a good leader to us these past oh goodness gracious no she's been the leader since i've been uh in mitra gloriana and if um if it's quite all um if it's okay um how long would that be i've been mitra gloriana for about a decade now maybe a little longer um but uh, Prior's Vicenzia is very, even now, she's very young. She's probably younger than I am, 34, 35. She was only oh, 15 when she, took, when she took over. And that was V-I-S-C-E-N-Z-I-A, Prior's Vicenzia. So, if the elves were fighting this battle uh, so quietly from the rest of the world, what, uh, what finally opens them up? Has it gotten worse to that point? I have no doubt that desperation is a part of it, but it was actually one who reached out to us to the elves that uh, had them start looking outward. The prioress before, Kalesa, that's not her name. Casella? Casella, thank you. Uh, prioress Casella married a dragon, and that was their first official contact with the outside world in quite a while. Uh, they made a pact with one another, to my understanding, uh, to aid one another. That led to the elves realizing that perhaps there could be aid found outside of Mitra Glorianda. Um, and that is what eventually led my father to find his way there and eventually myself as well. Where's your father now? <laughs> she gets a look on her face. Mm. My father uh, insisted on taking a front and center position in the military. Uh, he went and founded a new fort on the front lines that has been under attack ever since. But he has decided that he will hold the line there and has promised us it will not break. And to um, his credit, it has not. He's continued to hold the line for that long. Hmm. Quite a while I've, now. I wasn't aware that Captain Raynor had a... Oh. I am Captain Raynor. My father is General Varys. Oh. Oh. I'm my my apologies um my mother had been uh my mother had some amount of confusion um when he suddenly disappeared and uh ah. well this was this this would explain what this explains a lot. Yes, uh, he and my mother both came to Mitra Glorianda to, uh, well, help out. They had grown bored. And, uh, oh. Well, um. Yes, uh, Commander, uh, Commander Rayla has proven quite effective at smuggling. Smuggler. Oh. Yeah. She was a great thief, or so I'm told, when she was younger, and uh, she's put her skills to use. Well, even thieves can find big things to make effect. Nudge Ayla. Probably a little too hard at that. Uh, 
Uh, gods, this is... I, I'm sorry, this is quite, um... <laughs> We've got nothing but time, so it's fine with me. Uh, no, it's, it's more, it's... You, 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 you know who we are, yes? Not particularly. I know that you are officers in the Children of the Deep. I know that you in particular, Ramiel, I have been assigned to ensure arrive safely. Uh, he doesn't like that a lot. <laughs> and I know that you have the same scales that the Prioress does. The... Prioress, <laughs> Romuel kind of like looks at her with like wide eyes. How did you know about my my scales? Because they're visible on your neck, and indeed, as you kind of feel, they're growing, they're spreading. Oh, <laughs> that's new. Are you sick, Ramram? Um. Uh, no. Um. Uh, Is it normal? He just needs moisturization. <laughs> oh, okay. No, I it's. I assure you that is. Really, is going to get like the jelly and like. Misconception. Try to put it on his skin. <laughs> oh, no, uh, Rayleigh, really, do you remember when um when uh you had. You'd, you'd splash some water on me and um, and thought it was weird that I didn't um, take my wet clothes off. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, uh, there is... Well, the... I'm... There are some things on my person that I'm not quite um comfortable showing um other people i don't want to um i don't want to uh give them the uh misconception or um or or reason to further um detest me yes it's quite quite I fine feel and understandable you, you showed us the scales on your arms but uh it oh seems shame they are growing I, the, I mean, the, the last time they grew, uh, uh, rather the, the more appropriate term would be spreading, um, uh, would have been a few years back when I got to Mother's Jail. At first they were, they were, they were on my arms when, um, when I, got my um magics and the next time uh the the the, the following day after i had um i touched uh, mother's jail soil i found out they had spread quite um quite a few a fair bit um across much of much of my body um which kind of why is sort of why i am um, i came to mother's jail partly because of that and partly because there's you mentioned a pact uh, yes uh my understanding is that uh azure and the prioress had struck a cord of mutual defense. Uh, the Dragonborn were to send uh, an army up to assist for the first time, and in return, the elves of Mitra Glorianda would offer the Dragonborn protection. Pr protection? How long before the Dragon Civil War, which has been for the last, what, two decades? Would have 20 been, years, right? This would have been almost 20 years before that. Yeah. Hmm. 
Yeah, because like, um, because it, it was twenty years after um, uh, fall of Scala, and then fifteen years, and the um, or rather like five years into. Yeah, it's uh, been twenty fall years Scala? since Scala fell. They're talking twenty years before that, so yeah, about forty yeah. years oh, ago. Oh, okay, so, so forty Scala years ago. Okay, okay, okay. They've been fighting these devils for like five hundred years. Yeah, centuries. Yeah. yeah. So five hundred years the war uh, for the uh, Boreon busy. War. Yeah. But and that, the, uh, the the devils came after the first time Scala was here. Correct. Yes, Mitra Glorianda rose from the sea two hundred years after the first fall of Scala. Yep. As far as known, currently unrelated. <laughs> yes. Yeah, uh, yeah, there yeah, does yeah. not seem to be any relation yeah. between this and Scala. I just meant because I th I think that's where Mal was getting confused. Yeah. Yes. Is, is Ram Ram okay with Braley putting jelly on his scales? <laughs> If you're looking for something for dried skin, I created quite a while ago a, a sort of jelly that could be used on demon wounds. I assume this would be similar. Oh, this is nature's lotion. Which would be the same thing, actually. Fun fact. <laughs> Wait, I like um, to try it. Let's try it. <laughs> Mal, wait, Ram's okay with this. <laughs> Ra Ramiel is actually like um, when the when they make the uh, the pointed comment about the, uh, the the scales growing, he's actually going to um, uh, uh, take off his robe and just kind of like um, just uh, like lift his um, his sleeve up mm -hmm. and in front of everybody. Yeah. Yeah. And um, he's disrobed. He's still, he's still, well, okay. So, like, the his um, his outfit is like he has like a, a loose robe on, and like underneath that, he has like this like um, form fitting long sleeved um, uh, not bodysuit, but like a like a, a long sleeved shirt, I guess. Mm. And um, uh, it the the neckline would be like kind of halfway up his neck a little bit so like he he he'd lift he 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 covers a lot of his of his body um uh with with clothing and and obfuscates um his form with the with the loose robe but like when he when he does disrobe you actually do see like he has like um lean uh, uh, like a lean tone to him like he's not like built or like jacked or anything like that but like he has some muscle definition what's everyone's percep passive perception not uh, great 13. 18 oh, sorry, sorry Layla what? what'd you say yours was 18 18 yeah Layla and Braley you two both spot a hickey <gasps> hell yeah Really, is gonna put, try to put jelly over that too. <laughs> is it? Uh, Ramiel, you notice uh, only then do you notice that uh, Canis definitely gave you that. Uh, Bradley, where, where? Just oh. got a little something. Right? Um, no, that's. I think that's... they call those love bites, don't they? Oh, uh... they sure do. I feel like Ayla just looks at Nova and is doing everything she can not to crack up. Just getting one of these. Well, come on now, all y'all. Let's not shame them. It's all uh, this, perfectly natural. There's nothing to be ashamed about. I'm not quite exactly. sure what you're implying. Too true. Uh, I don't said. think it was implying, though. I don't think you were open. Were you opening your robe just to show off your hickey? No, no, I was checking, I was checking the, the, the degree of with which the, uh, these, um, <clears throat> and, and he's, and he's just going to trail off and just, like, quietly put his back, his robes there's, back no, on. No, no, there's scales. definitely more. Is it uncomfortable, Ram Ram? Your scales yeah. definitely have spread. Uh, as I say. They bear striking resemblance to the scales that Prior's Vicenzia has. I assume that's why she's interested in talking to you. Uh, and ha and ha how long have you um have you known um the the current Prioress? 
I've worked for her in various capacities over the t- last 10 years. And she's always had these, um, these scales. She's not shy about them. Uh, she is, she proudly proclaims herself the daughter of Azure. Ramiel's eyes shoot, like eyebrows shoot the fuck up and he just goes, I'm sorry. She calls herself what? She's the daughter of Azure and Prioris Casella. Oh my god. How old is she? In her mid 30s. Mm. Just checking. Matriarch's tits. I think I have a sister. Mm. I wasn't going to say it out loud, but yes. Uh, kind of seems that way. Ramiel, I need you to make a wisdom saving throw. Oh no. Fifteen? On instinct. Uh, after you say matriarch's tit, you pull up a small bag and put a coin in it. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> oh no, the curse purse lives on. Curse purse has been instilled. <laughs> Potentially traumatically so. Oh my god. I love the fact that he can say fuck and shit and, and all those and all of those, yeah, but, but you take, do not take Evelyn's name in vain. Yeah, you are, yeah. We do not blaspheme in this house. Talking, talking of the, <laughs> taking the fucking Matriarch's name in vain. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, oh yeah, my god, I love it. That's some, that's some serious juju you're messing with. <laughs> god. Okay, I, I, I can live with that, holy fuck. Remove and then add to notes, curse, purse. <laughs> One. <laughs> Fuck. Curse. Well, that would uh, explain some things. Due to the, uh, uh, a family reunion. There is a lot of information that I need to take in in a very short span of time. Um, Welcome to one of my campaigns. Do you have any alcohol? We do have plenty of booze. I think we need some whiskey now. My favorite. Uh, And uh, you see uh, Lysel roll her eyes. Sure, it's five o'clock somewhere, maybe in Mitra Glorianda. <laughs> Wait, what time is it? <laughs> uh, maybe is here. Early? It's late, actually. It's oh. probably like two in the morning. Perfect time for drinking. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Agreed. That's not wholly without truth to it. Wait, shit. What? Wait, wait. What time is it? It's late. Like by now, it's pretty late. Oh, like, we, like, we got that, a red eye mm-hmm. before they even existed. Yeah, you guys are mm-hmm. flying on the overnight right now, so. Uh, it's easier to slip in and out of town at, at, at dark without being seen, so. Oh, why, why, why would you say, why? Uh, but you are all brought a glass of whiskey, which they pour <laughs> one for each. And down it goes. Ra- mm-hmm. Ramiel will fucking down that shit, like, in one go. Really's gonna savor it. Layla's sophisticated and will, yeah, she will drink it properly, which is you sip it. (laughs) Not this time. You let it air, you let it you. No, I'm sorry. The first one you chug, the second one you sip, obviously. Uh, As Kelsey downs hers, uh, Katir steps out and watches her do so and just gives her a rather pointed look and she gives a look back. Don't even, don't even. I don't wanna hear another lecture on what I do to my liver. And uh, Katir just rolls his eyes and keeps walking. Join us! If you are quite concerned, I can treat her as well. Uh, <laughs> Katir gives you a look. Good luck. <laughs> she doesn't need luck. Her skill speaks for, his, for itself. <sighs> she actually blushes at that. Well, uh, I'm going to go take first post 
tonight uh, on the helm. Uh, you all can get some sleep as you like. As I say, it'll be a few days till we get there, but um, uh, we'll see you there safely. See you then. So we're going to go into an overnight sequence. You all can do, you can talk with whoever you like. If you want to speak with someone on the crew, if you want we to speak with each other. We can all do whoever we like. I mean, well, I mean, you can shoot your shot. Yeah. Oh my God. But uh, there's some cuties. I I there need are. to point out that my wife heard me say that because she just shouted orgy. <laughs> uh, there are some cuties on this ship. I would say, um, a bunch the of cuties. different looking people. And then there's Thermal, and she's fine. Uh, you know, no, she, she's objectively she's doing her best. not fine. <laughs> no, no, she definitely had a big she, piece of her taken off at one point. She's she's something for somebody. Oh, for sure, like. There is a Dia Asenil somewhere who is just salivating. Chomp, chomping on the bit. Yeah. Mm. On her bits, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, Nova is going to take another drink of whiskey and uh, say that uh, they need to retire for the evening. They have a conversation to have with a mm. somebody. Really? I don't think that's really necessary. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, Nova, you head down to your quarters, just so I know what's everyone else doing. Yep. All right. Um, if he is receptive, Lahila would try and have a, a small conversation to check in with Ramiel. Okay. So, we're going to have a talk between Ramiel and Layla. Uh, Ayla, Ayla. Braley? Uh, Ayla's probably just going to have a couple drinks and go to bed. Really is gonna snack like all night and continue <laughs> drinking. <laughs> just, uh, just like have like a, one of the, like like a fucking squirrel, just hold a cracker up and just like Lee. gnaw on it. Uh, Lysel is doing the first class life. Lysel, yeah, she's... Lysel likes you. She she is thrilled to have someone who actually like eats all her food. Like everything she puts out gets eaten. She's like, yes, this is great. Um, okay. Trip mom life dude be like that. She is indeed. She was given the title of first mate, but she knows what she's about. Um, okay. It's okay. It's okay. You can you can say you can say she may be the ship mom, but Kelsey to Kelsey, she's the ship mommy. Mm. <laughs> no, and Callie, yes. <laughs> she's also the first mate. Nova, you make your way down to your room that evening close the door it's pretty thin so you're definitely going to be thinking more than speaking yes. Aruna you are met with silence Aruna we need to talk and what about but apparently you came from the moon that is their opinion that is their recounting of events. So have you been to Mitra Gloriande? No. And did you live on the moon? On Rosland? I do not remember. What I told you when we met was very true. I came down to this land on the shooting star. I don't remember anything else. I've certainly never met another devil. You're saying that that was their explanation. What? What is your explanation of events? What do you think they're talking about? Well, I do not know. I've never been to Mr. Glorianda. I do not. I have certainly never been to Rosalind, at least not to my memory. I do not know that there are others like me who are at war with your kind. What's this about a soul coin? I, I am not certain. I have never made a soul coin. I don't know what that is. I do know that I like, that I had an urge to take a soul, and I did. Do you hunger for another soul? No. 
I don't think so. I have yours. suppose I wondered if I always thought that you would be moving on to find more to collect. It sounds as if these devils, uh, how you say it, they expend the souls that they take. They grow more powerful from them, but I do not craft your soul into one of these coins, and I do not expend it. And what do you do with it, then? What do you want to do with it, then? I don't know. It's like, why do you breathe? Your instincts tell you to. It is uncomfortable when you do not. It is like that. I'm not, I wouldn't be upset if you, well, I suppose I would be happy right now, but I always thought the soul was used to power you up, but you don't, you seem different from these devils that they're facing. Uh, according to what they said, uh, there has been a war between this Meteor Gloriana and the Moon Rosalind for a very long time, but I do not remember coming from this place. That said, if I did come down here on a shooting star, perhaps I did start there, and I cannot remember. Well, you need to be extra careful then, Amitra Glorianda, and if these devils are able to contact you, then I need to know that. What do you mean you need to know that? Since when do you give me orders? just mean that it would be helpful to know if you are going to be gone. Mm. Helpful? Or you want to know? Isn't me wanting to know giving you an order? Why do you want to know? Because my soul is with you, and if my soul is with you, then this whole thing that I am doing is moot. That is what I am. The bearer of your soul. Uh, Nova seems caught off guard by that as she... Uh, if that is the nature of what we are, if we are a transaction, then you can say that. What are we to you? I do not know. I... When he left you, I was angry for you. You gave your soul for him, and he spit in your face, and I was furious. I did not intend to screw you over. You came to me and you asked for help for him and I granted it for your soul. I, I don't blame you for that. You did everything right. That wasn't you. That was him. So and I did not want to leave you hanging. I wanted to help you. She, uh, she squirms uh, on the bed. I don't... Aruna, I don't deserve that. Why? I knew what I was doing, and I knew that it would mean losing feeling. You fucked up. You made a mistake. It's what I wanted. I used you. And you were wrong. And that's okay. You shouldn't have to suffer forever for that. And you 
you shouldn't have to go against your nature just to help me. When you get your soul back, you will leave and I will be alone again. I made peace with that. But I am not going to screw you over for them because they are devils. Because they are like me. I believe you. If you tell me that, then I will believe you. And <laughs> some I think would call it naivete, but I think it's because well, even if you are lying to me, what could I do about it? Act. I'm you sorry? You take a choice. The choice has always been yours. And it still is. know how to hold on to things anymore. Because when you did, you lost everything. Because when I did, I... I couldn't let go. Even though I wanted to. Maybe I can't let go either. Then... Then don't. Not yet. I am um, going to lay down. She kind of just fades away. And uh, I'm guessing these beds are like in like the corner of the room. Yeah, it's a little cot in the corner of the room. So they, uh, once that's over, they kind of slump and like face the corner and roll up and uh, for the first time in many years because I think when Nova lost their soul it was probably the first time they never had to feel anxious or racing thoughts about anything and for the first time they are starting to again uh, Layla and Ramiel yes you two are I think you're above deck uh, just uh, out near the front bow of the ship, kind of gazing off. All around you, there is dark ocean beneath. Uh, in the furthest distances, uh, you can see the sun rising uh, over the otherwise dim clouds. You two, it's your scene. Are you... Are you familiar with um with the uh, the the Baka Mitai, um uh whiskey scene? Like him just like doubled uh the, that, like, the what now? The the Baka Mitai, Hold on. Uh, let me see if I can't like uh. So no. You, you know. Hold on. <laughs> sorry. No, I am not. Uh, okay. This guy. The Damidane guy. That's that's what that's what um that's what Ramiel is um is um no doing right now. A little. Okay. Okay. Um yeah, uh Ramiel is having to like process a lot of information and feelings at the moment and he doesn't mm -hmm. really know what to do. Fair. Um like, Yeah. Layla will just sit nearby him, sipping on her own drink for a few minutes before she says anything. You know, that's sort of give him space to start the conversation, and when it becomes obvious that he's not. Mm -hmm. So, are you doing quite well? You seem to have had a uh, quite a day. Uh, Romuel kind of, um, uh, Grimaces at that. That's putting it lightly. I 
woke up uh, dreading uh, meeting Canis, um, mainly because I wasn't sure if it was the same Canis I met. And it turned out, and it turns out that it was. And in the interim, I find out I'm some kind of prince. <sighs> and that I have living family. Well, that's a positive part of it. But, large finding out things about yourself that you thought were certain aren't, uh, it's always, always difficult to deal with. Uh, can I share something with you? I... The... A month after I arrived in Mother's Jail, I thought of... I thought of, um... Ending my life. I was not having any luck uh, finding any of these supposed um, companions that could stand to be around me or even bring me to the qualities I, 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 I seeked out. And then, then you came along. <laughs> it was like it was like I got to meet my mother with how open hearted you were well I did always feel that my calling was to save lives although not in quite that manner she seems a little embarrassed. Layla, I don't think you know exactly just how much I owe my life to you. Nonsense. You don't owe me anything. An apology would start. It'd be a good start. For what? For being, uh, put it uh, quite simply, a pain in the ass. I'm quite aware that I have, I do have that effect on people, especially with how I end up talking. It's all right. You're simply being you. And there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Lately, I really don't know who I am. No. But I, I, I don't, I don't really know who, who I am, for that matter. Uh, am I? Am I? Ramya and the rest, the eldest son of Melody and Hashira, of the Whispers in Silence, the poor fucking orphan that they adopted as they saw some kind of chance in me. They took a chance. A decade, uh, a decade later, I'm here. Or am I who they say I am? The long lost prince. Long thought to be dead like his mum. Yeah. 
it's it's always difficult and uh she'll she'll do the sort of like friendly hand on the arm thing but i would say more importantly is who do you want to be you could be either you could even be both is there any reason they couldn't be the same person Ramiel kind of um, sits there for a little bit. Takes a sip. He goes, You know, I kind of envy you and Canis. Be being people who, uh, who are able to, um, live with this truth she gives us a sort of almost sad tinged smile I mean I mean it's a It's not always easy, but in the end of the day, you have to stick by who you are. What is real, what is true, what is meaningful. Are you quite sure you've never found me not even the tiniest bit annoying. I mean... These things happen, but why would I hold that against you? If it's... Longer than the time of it occurring. That's fair. All it's... We all have our moments. It's more so uh, with... Most people I encounter, they end up saying I am quite fucking annoying, and... Oh no, I, I understand, but... You understand? I, I understand, I've seen, I've seen how others react to you, but... You, you aren't the way, you don't act that way out of any sort of malice or it, other ill will. No, I just, um, I just... So, why should I hold that against you? Because I tend to say things that... Oh, Jesus Christ, I'm sorry. I tend to say things that uh, people don't really appreciate, even though they are true. Yeah. They... We all, we all... I have to struggle with those sort of things, but again, you're not. It's not annoying to me when one is just doing what they think is best. What is annoying to me is when others are deliberately setting out to cause harm, which you are not doing. Everything else is just small disagreements. I... At least the way I see it. You're a fundamentally good and well-intentioned person. So... I... I believe my uh, my mother's would have quite the um, the discussion with me if uh, if any of their letters did not stick. <laughs> the the curse purse being one thing that I never yes, really... I saw that. Well, that is a remarkable behavioral tool. A little. Uh, and she is full on grinning at this point. <laughs> Mum insisted. Um, oh, well, not insisted and more so reinforced. 
it, she wasn't the kind of person that you wanted to see angry. Oh, yes. Her um, auntie, Rialta. Uh, it's. You, you know you're in trouble when they don't speak and just look at you. Yes. Your mothers have had quite quite the impact on you, though you not be of their flesh. They wanted to make sure that we grew up knowing uh, we had we had mother figures. I I hear a lot about the the Prioress Casella and try as I might the only clear memory I have of her face is the one staring blankly up at me as her head rolled into view. Well, to bring things back around as we move in and you meet these folk. Say you do get along well and try and reconnect. Does that change anything that happened before? Does that change what your the folks who raised you mean to you? No. It's as far as I'm concerned, I'm... I'm a... tried and true Larest. First one. If that matters. And well, as long as you stick true to that and honor them, I don't see why you can't at least be receptive to having a blood family as well. Maybe the Maybe my bigger at issue. least at least to hear them out, give them a chance. Therein lies the rub. Perhaps I'm also trying to comprehend the fact that my father is not the man I had apparently been calling father, but prior and now well, I'm wondering isn't that just a matter of perspective no uh, quite literally I before before I before I became an orphan um, I did have my mother who I surmise would be Prioress Casella and the father that I grew up thinking was my father was an was an elf, an uh, an Arduia as well. Um, he didn't really talk much. Um, just sort of he he, he just sort of um, stood there and watched over me and my mum. I <laughs> God, I've 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 never been able to call her my my mum in feels like years and now is like the most natural thing. Mm-hmm. We really should drink uh, more often like this. I I do apologize. I've been kind of standoffish. And... Again, nothing to apologize for. You have had some major things thrown at you within the last small span of time. No, it no. It is quite a lot of pro to process, and I'll always be glad to lend an ear. And my words. No, no. Let let me let me have this one. I, I very well. I 
I... I've come to realize that I have not been quite the um, the most no not not affectionate. What the fuck am I? What am I? What the fuck am I? Am I going for? I haven't been the most um, reliable companion, and. Um, I I can talk about how Nova and Ayla and Braley and you are, um, are people that I trust and I realize now that trust is a mutual thing um, that if I want your respective trusts I should I should I should be able to trust a little more in all of you. And well, I can't I certainly can't speak for the others, but if I didn't have it, some level of trust, I would not be continuing to travel with you, darling. There you go. You you have you have the the you have the um. Not quite sure how to. The aura of um of a mum. Are you sure? Are you quite sure you you you, you haven't sired a? Not sired, Jesus Christ. You haven't um. You don't have any little ones. I'm quite sure. <laughs> huh? I'm, I'm what you would call several steps away from that being a possibility. Well, if you ever find yourself in Terrison, uh... Need a way to make? <laughs> if you ever find yourself in, uh, in Terrison, uh, I may know of a... I may know of a place, uh, that... Um, that is a sanctuary for um for children in need of uh, families. Well, that might be that might be in order once all of this is quite settled. But I'll let that come when it does. And hey, maybe at some point we are. Uh... If you um if you ever do uh, adopt, uh, technically they are my siblings, so we we will be family, and you will find me even more insufferable as as family as a. Uh... I'm I mean, sure it'll all work out. Technically speaking, if you are Azure's son, we're, we're already you're already, technically yeah. just you're already cousins. Family. Yep. You'll Romeo still hasn't put those two dots uh, together, but like he, he's he, he's he's gonna realize. He's like he's like wait, Felicia is also Azure's like kid, mm -hmm. huh? Gonna yeah, sit got in a relative silence with the uh, Layla just uh, drinking now. As your evening goes on and you two talk and enjoy some drinks together and share some stories. Uh, down below, uh, Ayla, you've finally gotten to lay down after having a couple of drinks. Uh, you're, it's not comfortable finding a way to like lay down in this bed because <laughs> your wings are entirely too big for this room. So you're having Aww. to like fold them and tuck them properly to like make it work. But as you're resting, uh, you hear a voice speak to you. Um, hi, Eliana. I know it's been a while since we talked. And maybe the last time wasn't so pleasant, but um, I'm on Mother's Jail. Uh, 
Uh, and I think, Ailey, you recognize Nathala's voice quite clearly. Who? Her sister. Wow. I think Ayla, like, probably... Poor Nova's just gonna hear a thump out of Ayla's room as she, like, tries to sit up. And, like, <laughs> falls off the bed because of how her wing was folded. <laughs> hear a knock. <laughs> I... How did you get to Mother's Jill? What... It's, it's good to hear from you, but, like, I just... And I feel like she's just going to kind of ramble on like that until, like, it cuts off. Yep. Uh, well, you only hear silence. All right. Uh, the night passes. Um, uh, not a whole lot else happens. Um, in the morning, uh, you are all awakened and, uh, summoned for, uh, breakfast. Uh, the sound that wakes you up is, uh, a kind of like, not an air raid siren necessarily, but a siren. Uh, and if anyone peeks their head out in time, they will see, uh, Thermal walking down the hall with their mouth open and an air raid siren coming out. Love that for them. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, goals. <laughs> As they let you know that uh, breakfast is being served. Uh, Thank you. You make your Thank way you. up and uh, around the mess hall. Uh, everyone's eating except for uh, Kelsey, who is up uh, piloting the ship at the moment. Uh, you do see Thermal is at the table as well, although they are drinking from a straw that, like, it's a piece of wood that goes down into their drink and then attaches to a spot in their throat and then like suctions up the liquid into their body. Damn. They don't seem to give a shit at all if anyone stares. I mean, when you have that much damage, like, yeah. <laughs> at a certain point, you're just like, what? Basic, except that, that, except if anyone for her, looks, that's basically the look she gives you. Well, except I for her, it'd I be- I survived worse than you, <laughs> fucker. Pretty much. <laughs> Has Braley's uh, braid um, survived the night? Braley, has your braid survived the night? Are you yeah. so Braley? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think Braley ever left the mess hall. Like, she probably fell asleep on a plate. <laughs> and then uh, she. <laughs> if that's the case, when you woke up, there was a blanket over mm -hmm. your back. Aww. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, in the morning, there's a cup of hot chocolate in front of you. Oh. Uh. I feel like Ayla's probably the last one up and she's just kind of like hobbling in with like one wing like awkwardly like stuck. You have got the worst, like you've got a stiff neck times a thousand in one of your wings today. That was not my fault. <laughs> Good to know. Yeah, surprisingly no. it was it was quiet. So we, uh... the, bed, the beds here are... It's not... I hate airships. If you wish, I could take a look at that after breakfast. Perhaps we get a clothesline, and we hang you up by the wings, and then you hang, and you sleep, like an upside-down bat. I think I'd rather sleep like a regular bat. <laughs> okay, well, then we tie you by your legs. You hear a... <laughs> repeated like clicking sound and you realize that thermal was laughing <laughs> <laughs> i'm just saying when you have unusual circumstances you need unusual solutions uh katir nods mm -hmm. that's what uh, that's what i keep telling everyone around here anytime they want me to try and do a procedure of any kind they're like is this how you're supposed to do it is this how you learn to do it in medical school no it's not but i don't have any of the materials that i had in medical school so you work with what you got. Correct. Oh, Indeed. I need to have you people around more often. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. Do they yes. have coffee? Um, you yeah, you could get, probably get coffee. Okay. Probably I was going to uh, grab uh, one of the bigger uh, tankards and uh, just pour himself like mm -hmm. 
a big dose. Uh, Lysel sits down. I can't tell you how nice it's been getting to uh, spend a night away from the explosions and, you know, fighting. I'm sure it wasn't comfortable for you, but it was quite nice for us. Oh, no, not uh, not a problem. I, uh, I mean, who could have... Who could have expected someone with wings would be on an airship? Which, well, <laughs> yeah. Well, like you say, when uh, Kelsey asked me to marry her and promised me a life of excitement, this isn't exactly what I had in mind. But you know, that's fine. I don't, I don't know. Getting to um, travel through the air, sailing the skies, is kind of, kind of exciting. It gets old. How long were? How long have you been together? Uh, let's see. Uh, Twelve years now. So that is wow. a long time. Really. Yes. Uh, we met uh, when she was uh, gathering supplies for their conclave in the God's Grasp, and uh, well, we hit it off. Uh... <laughs> uh, thermal uh, makes a noise. You're amazed at how quickly you're all starting to understand thermal, and you're not happy about it. It's like, like I you're am like Groot. <laughs> kinda. It's <laughs> like yeah. It's like when in the second movie, now Quill understands him when he talks. Yeah, <laughs> it's kind of like that. Uh, where she's basically suggesting is like try living with the two of them. It's great. <laughs> 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 Robbie like just kind of like subtly jabs the thumb at Nova and Ayla. Um, yeah, I was gonna say, I feel for, like for Ayla thermal. looks at Thermal and then looks at uh, Nova and then Ramiel. Uh, Nova does not notice this. <laughs> and is just looking looking back, <laughs> completely unaware. Uh, and, and just nods. It is it is nice when uh, when love can work out. Myself smiles at that. It is. Ramiel does a thing. spit take. Oh, that's true. Considering the uh, the love bites, you could know that quite well, Ramiel. I don't know what you're talking about. Nah, there we go. I mm. hope uh, I hope the other one uh, across the continent uh, learns about him. Uh, <clears throat> I don't. What are you implying? Nothing. Just that. Uh, uh, Melchior uh, speaks up. She's suggesting you cheated on your partner. And he sips his drink. Uh, really, it's like giving you the death stare. <laughs> like, what did you do? <laughs> Who did you do? I feel like Ayla just kind of fuck's sake, Ramiel. He gave you a ring. He did not give me a ring. He enchanted oh, I'm sorry. the ring. Did the ring fall out of the air? No, I got him the ring as a promise of me coming back to him. Mm hmm And he and the and the bloody bastard fucking enchanted it for me. And yeah. well, and we said goodbye. And you're sleeping around on this guy? He sounds sweet. I am not sleeping around with him. Uh, yes, he is, he is quite sweet. Orion, Orion, it, Orion um, is quite considerate. He, is, um, he took me to meet his family. He, we went on, God, we, oh my God, we, we went on a couple of dates already. Uh, the fact of the matter is... You two might be due for the exclusivity conversation, says okay. Melchior. You do sound like you're digging yourself a bigger hole. Although I am still waiting to hear the conclusion. Uh, at, at the mention of digging a bigger hole, uh, Thermal looks up panicked, uh, as if to suggest, do not dig a hole on this ship. Mm. You will not mm. like what happens. Damn it, Thermal beat Ayla to it. <laughs> I look 
It is quite complicated in the manner of I did not expect the person to have occupied the better half of my very, very lonely years um, to suddenly, apparently, it also mutually have returned um, certain feelings. Ooh. And one... <sighs> uh, cut here now, first love syndrome. It, maybe? I, 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 I don't know. Hmm. I mean, I just, I just learned that the, uh, the, 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 the thing that, um, he gave me, uh, when we first, um, uh, parted was not a, an exclusive thing, and it was something that he handed out to every fucking man that caught his fancy. Um, Melchior uh, stands up and take and grabs his uh, plate of food. I'm gonna go jump overboard, uh, and he goes upstairs. The scales didn't happen like after that, right? I, I need to talk. <laughs> Robbie will actually like um, things about it, about that and goes. I I don't I don't. You mean like the first time it it happened? Well, I mean, you said he gave you something he gives every man he's interested in. That sounds it um, is, it like is something a that might need treatment. Concern, yes, dear. Um, we maybe should have something of a talk. Nova's getting he... some alcohol. <laughs> no, she needs. Uh, Nova, Lysel gives you a look. I. Just... You know, you know this look. You haven't seen it in a long time, but you know when a mother is giving you that, oh, you're going to break my heart look. <laughs> I, it, please, it's just... It, I, I, no, go ahead. I'll go get some air. I won't stop you. I, I'm not going to stop you. It's not my place to stop you. Just, I care about you and it hurts. <laughs> You've been... Know. I've only known you for, for less than I'm 24 hours. <laughs> She's the ship mom. Anyone on this ship is her child. I'm uh, not mad. I just want to let you know. Nova I am just a little dis disappointed. <laughs> Nova but I'm goes, not mad. goes quietly above deck. Okay. <laughs> I think Ayla goes too. <laughs> I... Listen. You want, you, you want the fucking truth? Okay, yes. I like Orion. And yes, I also like Canis. And as it turns out, they both like me. They both share a mutual. Perhaps you should maybe have a conversation with all three of you. Which I intend to have, yes. It's just a matter of getting all three of us in, in one common area where we can set some things straight. Well, but we'll make <laughs> that a priority when the opportunity arises then. I, I do intend to talk to Ryan about uh, quite a few things. Um, I God, I, I, don't, I don't want to break his heart. I And Ramiel actually like trails off at that and and like looks at um looks at Layla with like this fucking enlightened um uh, uh expression on his face. Oh my god. I think I love him. Lysel just sips her tea. <laughs> Is 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 that how th is that how y is that how you find out? You think about him all the time. 
A, a lot, yeah. That seems to be what what all folks say. That's when Nova gets up, actually, to leave. <laughs> uh, do you cool. sing songs about him? Well, I'm I'm not I'm not my mother. I <laughs> can't quite. Yeah, that make. was more Melody's thing. <laughs> and boy, howdy, has she made songs about Tafira. Much to sheer chagrin. Uh, up up top, uh, Thermal approaches you, Ayla. Uh, this almost cyborg-esque individual uh, approaches and kind of looks at you uh, as if examining you. Do I know... You have no idea what they're saying, uh, but they point at your scars. Oh. Oh, fair. Oh, the ones on, like, her arms? Yeah, your, your lightning scars. scars. Your lightning scars. <laughs> oh. Um. I'm sorry, I'm still not quite exactly getting what... You're not exactly certain what they want with it. They're just pointing to them right now. She's been injured herself. She's probably curious where it came from. Would be my guess. Um, kind of self-inflicted. She tilts her head. Uh, here, you might want to take a step back and she'll just do her, you know, blood thing with the electricity. She looks impressed. Mm. It happened accidentally the first time, and yeah. She opens her mouth, and like earlier when that air raid siren came out, this time a voice speaks, but oh. it's um... But it's not hers. It's clearly Kelsey's voice that speaks. It's recording. And it says, you're very pretty. Thank you. Fucking Aranaka. <laughs> she is. She's kind of like an Aranaka. Aranaka, yeah. Couldn't think of what it's called. Um, at, uh, after a moment, uh, another voice speaks. This one is, um, uh, is Lysel's. Can you assist me? Possibly. It depends on what you need help with. She points to your scars again. You need lightning for something? She nods. Give it a shot. Uh, she escorts you down, all the way down to the engine room. And Carl, I'll let you tell me how much Ayla understands technology. Probably a decent bit but not on um, like nearly the same level that she would sure what you see down here is for you i think incredible it is an engine that runs on this large centralized magic crystal that lightning is arcing out of uh and it is basically uh, uh a current that is running through uh these heaters they're like long coils that are underneath a large reservoir of water and are causing steam to boil and turn a turbine, effectively. And that's how the propellers move. Okay. Um, what you immediately notice is that something is wrong with the crystal and its lightning is arcing a little bit out of control. It shouldn't be... It's not going uh, through the coils the way that it's supposed to. That's why the ship is slowing down. Um, it's not going to like fall out of the sky because the balloon is what actually suspends it in the air, but it isn't moving forward as fast as it should. And she motions to the crystal and is wondering, could you use your magic to kind of stabilize it? I could try. Okay. Um, how do you it... try? Uh, I think she's first going to ask, does it like need more power or less power? <laughs> like, is it overcharged and that's why it's arcing or... She kind of, she doesn't frown because she doesn't have a lower jaw to frown with. Um, but her eyes kind of squint as she seems to be thinking about it. Um, 
and uh, she uh, suggests that uh, she motions to it and se- and like compresses her hands down and then spreads them apart. You suggest she- you think she's trying to convey to you that it needs more power. Okay. Um. I think technically I'm supposed to be holding a weapon for the blood, like the writ, the I'll rights. Bend the rules a little bit for okay. Thing. Uh, she will, you know, do her usual thing to activate it, and I think she'll just try to like drip some of her electrified blood on it and use the amplifying blood curse. Make a attack roll for me. Uh, using my, like, regular strength, or... Yeah, I mean, you could use, if you want to use intelligence, you can, but I would say... My strength is better, so... Uh, dirty 20. Yeah. Uh, so as you do, as you drip some, uh, your blood onto it, she kind of, like, quirks an eyebrow at that, but doesn't move to stop you in any way, and indeed, as some of the lightning uh, kind of concentrates and arcs out of it into the crystal, it does seem to stabilize and resume heating the water properly. Uh, and you, uh, everyone feels the ship suddenly like pick up speed. Oh, and uh, uh, <laughs> you see, deck. It's like, oh, fuck. <laughs> you see her mouth uh, open, and Kelsey's voice comes out and says, "Thanks for not fucking it up." <laughs> and she Hope gives so. like. She gives an apologetic look with her eyes as if she's like, I need a better way of saying that, but I don't have one. <laughs> I feel like Ayla just, like, smiles kind of appreciating Kelsey's way so, of phrasing that and gives her a thumbs up. Sorry, I was accidentally <laughs> condescending. <laughs> Ramiel. Uh, but, uh, Thermal nods politely and, uh, walks with you back upstairs. Uh, Braley. As you're just kind of picking away at some food in the uh, mess hall, uh, Lysel is sitting with you. You, um, I've met few with an appetite like yours. Oh, yeah. Like, I just, you know, I feel it in my stomach and then I put the food in my mouth and then, like, sometimes it just takes a lot. How about you? I, um, I've been known to be able to put it away sometimes. Yeah, you do. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. What do you... <laughs> <Too easy. laughs> I, that was in my brain, but... <laughs> <laughs> nah, I said it for you. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> you seem like you've got a lot on your mind. Me? Well, I was kind of looking at these, like, I'm assuming there's, like, assortment of food. Yeah, there's, I mean, she would put out a bunch of different little things. Well, I was thinking I could sandwich, like, this, uh, this meat and, like, these eggs into, like, these two biscuits and then, like, keep adding and adding. I mean, we should try you it. <laughs> yeah, you could, yeah. Um, you're more than welcome to. Um... Call it a intuition. Just sometimes when Kelsey's upset, she tends to eat a lot because it's easier to put food in her mouth than say things out of her mouth. Oh, okay. Right. Okay. Um. Fair enough. Well, uh, sorry, I just thought I'd overshare my wife's business with you. Oh, yeah. Like, why is she stressed? Usually because of her father, but that's not neither here nor there. Um, uh, are you okay? Uh, yeah, I feel okay. I mean, I feel... <laughs> really, are you okay? This is your chance to talk. <laughs> your chance to open up about your feelings. Oh my god. Give us the lore! Give us the Bray lore! 
<laughs> exactly. Mm, really? <laughs> Look at it this uh, way. I'm a cap or I'm a first mate on a ship that you're probably never gonna see again. Who am I gonna tell? I don't know. You could tell your I don't know. Kelsey wouldn't listen if I did tell her. She would tune out almost immediately. Oh, Lysel is a whole fucking mood. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> My heart. If you're it's wondering if real. Lysel and Kelsey are based off me and Sarah, <laughs> they are. I fucking knew it. What? I wasn't going to say no. anything, but I fucking knew it. <laughs> I was like, honey, did you self-identify with one of your characters and they their <laughs> wife me again? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, Again. No. I love you too. <laughs> Again. Oh. Um, well, I guess I do have a lot going on. I have like a fiance, but not wow. really a fiance. Like oh. it was like arranged, but like Oh. Uh oh of course. Interesting. So the elves on Mother's Jail also do arranged marriages? Yeah, I like. Is he ugly? No, I don't think so. Is he a bastard? Uh, no, I don't is think so. A, is he a jerk? I don't really know him that well, but he seems nice. Oh. But, of course, you didn't choose him. He was definitely a surprise. But he gave me mushrooms, and she like she'll pull out her mushrooms. Look at these. She definitely has a moment of trying to decipher if he gave me mushrooms as a complaint or a brag. She's definitely <laughs> taking a moment to like to suss it out based on context clues before she nods. Well, he certainly seems to have put his research in. Definitely, she put him back. <laughs> well. Do you like him? I don't really know him. Do you like your wife? <laughs> For reasons I can scarcely comprehend, yes. Honey, no. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do with a wife? <laughs> What's that? Sorry. What do you do with a wife? Like, I never <laughs> even really... Um... Well, um... Like, I don't even... I guess I, I guess you make babies and stuff, or you like get I don't know. You have a house, or I guess an airship in this case. Um, I just never really thought about like the when <laughs> when I met when I met Kelsey. She was. complicated and I was already in a very comfortable situation that I could absolutely have just seen myself going with and one day I just kind of realized that I'd spend the rest of my life wondering what could have been if I didn't take my chance with them and some days I think back and go, what were you thinking? But most days she was right when she promised me that she would, I would never be bored. And I love every day that I get to spend with her. Wow. But it didn't start that way, of course. It started with us harmlessly flirting in the market. And, you know, it evolved from there. Hmm. When you meet the right person, you know. You might not have the... You might not have the courage right away, but you know. And 
when you take the leap, you realize that it's what you wanted to do all along. Well, how you know? Like, like, what do you? How do you know? No. How do you know? No. Other signs. Oh, other signs. It's like he gave me mushrooms. Was that a sign? It's a sign that he's thoughtful. It's a sign that he wants to do something nice for you. My belief has always been that the right person wants you to be happy. And I never have questioned whether or not she wants me to be happy. Now, is this guy right for you? Well, time will tell, I suppose, but I think it has to be someone that you choose. Someone that you pick out of the millions of people out there and say you're the one. Oh, okay. I've never really dated, like... You don't say. <laughs> yeah. Well, I have no doubt that whoever is your one is in for a unique and exciting experience. Oh. Well, I hope that I figure it out. <laughs> I'm sure you will, dear. It takes some longer than others, but you will. Hopefully. She goes back to sipping her tea. That is the most shameless I have ever been with a character. I noticed. <laughs> I noticed just shamelessly ripping off. <laughs> Jesus. Fuck. You guys good. are going to make me cry. <sighs> yeah. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> so. The day passes. It is interesting. I think after a while, you all, not that you say you get used to it, but you f start feeling more confident to, you know, go up on deck and, like, take in the sights, especially during the daytime where you can see as far as, like, further than any of you ever been able to see. And to, it's kind of, like, towards the evening of the second day when uh, Kelsey summons everyone up to the deck and motions off towards the north. And towards the north, you see a continent. And the surface of it from, like, the center point outwards is just glass. It reflects the evening sun. But towards the shores, where some of this glass has crumbled away, you see a number of cities that are beginning to form here and uh, Kelsey mentions uh, one of my good friends is actually uh, in charge of that project uh, they're trying to restore Alcana uh, but uh, welcome indeed to the continent of Alcana huh. never what thought I'd get to see it same oh she kind of blinks and looks uh should you see it? Uh, my parents are tieflings. My apologies, of course. Uh, yes, uh, well, uh, I guess that is your ancestral homeland, then. Um, a group from Terrison is actually working on its uh, reconstruction. Uh, it's been going for quite a while, though it still has a ways to go, I'm sure. I'll, uh, as you all get to sleep that night, uh, that evening, once again, you are contacted, Ayla, by your sister. Uh, her voice comes through again. <clears throat> so, hi. Glad you're doing good. I, um, just enlisted with the Mother's Jail Mercenary Company, and, um, 
waiting for my first assignment. Uh-oh. Is that run by What's-Her-Face? That is run by Madame Cassandra Delisle. Oh, fuck. Or I think the first word is just oh. I'm off on a job, but shit, what's what's the city that we were out of? You're based out of Jet's Ambition, you just left Mitra Scala. Thank you. I hopefully will be heading back to Jet's Ambition soon. I've been going by Ayla since I left. And you are again met only with silence. As you all settle in for sleep again, you are told that you'll be arriving and Meet your Primus in the morning. It's a... Well, it's as peaceful a night's sleep as you're going to get on this ship, uh, given the tight, you know, tight quarters. But it is interrupted. A loud explosion awakens all of you. It is pitch dark outside, except for you can already see orange flames fire from above. The whole ship rocks and shakes with the explosion. Uh, and a moment later, you hear that air raid siren going off again. As uh, you hear Thermal's door open, and she rushes down towards the um, uh, towards the engine room. Somehow I don't think that is breakfast. <laughs> I'm a little disappointed Thermal didn't have a recording of "Oh shit, get your weapons out." <laughs> <laughs> uh, I feel like Ayla grabs her swords and is heading topside. doing similar. As you get up into the mess hall, a second explosion shakes the ship uh, and throws you all off your feet. Uh, this one was much stronger than the first one was. Oh, goody. Uh, yeah, it's not great. Uh, and you hear from above Kelsey curse loudly. Um, assuming you all continue to head up towards the top deck. Yeah. Yeah. Unless we're told not to. Yeah. Emerging on the yeah. top deck, uh, the fire has already begun to spread. From immediately behind the captain's wheel, you can see where the back end of the ship where the propellers are has exploded. Uh, and fire is now uh, starting to take the sails that are on the uh, rear right side uh, and is drawing already near the balloon in the center. Uh, the other thing that has exploded is the crystal in the front that was casting the invisibility upon you. Um, all around you, bony white imps have begun to appear. And at the front of the ship, one of the individuals uh, who has been serving on the crew looks very different as he starts to grow out of his clothes, these deep, or his uh, flesh, pure bone white, a long scythe-like tail hooking out of his back. And I'll show you what you all see. Does he look like that guy we fought in the forest? No, he does not. Oh, never mind. Also, which which was the fake crew member? It was Melchior. I knew it. I didn't trust that dude. Ooh, animation. Ooh, Ooh, aren't we fancy? Mm -hmm. yeah. Ooh, I gotta fix health. 
Yes, everyone's probably going to have to fix their health because you all leveled up. As a massive bone devil stands on the front of the <laughs> ship and a number of imps float around. Uh, Nova and her Ed is going to ask, Aruna, do you know anything about these things? Uh, I am sorry. I have never seen them. All right. Well, time to kill them. And... I think that's where we'll wrap up with uh, right before we start combat. All right. 